Y'all, your boy here, Kai Green, a.k.a. Mr. Getting It Done. And guess what? I'm joined by my girl, your girl, too, Viola. Hello. What's up, mama? Hey, Say everyone. what's up to the Dino and Muscle family representing most hard. <laughs> we about to get into doing some legs. Yeah. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, we're about to do some legs. A lot of people have been talking about and asking about online with online training. So we're going to try to use this as an opportunity to shed some light on a few things. And uh, I was just fortunate enough to have Viola come on board and help me get this thing done. She's going to help me train my legs. Today. You're going to help me. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that too. So, what do you think about three movements? No idea. Okay, no problem. We'll work it out and you'll get a chance to watch us work it out and uh, we're about to get started. So if you're ready, let's try. Like, do you normally uh, train you see the calf racing? Well, I, I know you train calves. I train a lot, but I never start first on this class. Really? I like to start with the calves first. Why? Because when I was younger, I had a thing where, hey, Kai, you got great legs, great legs. Really, I had good quads. The hamstrings were, were, were lacking in comparison, and then the calves were just as lacking. Old school training wisdom would have been to train quads first, then have a little bit of hamstring, and then at the very end, you get a little bit of calves. But as a result, the development showed up in the same way. So in order to improve the development of my calves and my hamstrings, what I had to do was switch it up. So right. since then, I decided to always try to start with the, with the area that I wanted to bring up first, first. So we put the energy in those calves, particularly when your energy is most high after you've taken the average roar. Shameless plug, <laughs> I know, but it's effective. Now, I'm going to be a gentleman. I just want to show you All how right. I like to do this, but I do believe in gallantry and ladies going first. <laughs> ah. Just a cutty. Let's get it. when you bend your knee in the calf. Does that make sense? Because it sits between your fibula and your gastrocnemius. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, because you know here, twenty, Oh. I like the gray in your shirt. I feel like I got the on too. I'm just loving your colors today. You just feel like so cool. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
by elevating the amount of resistance that you're contracting your muscles against. This is an effort to create the right environment inside the muscle cells for hypertrophy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ah. Bring them out, bring them out. Doing like double? Uh, squeeze and down. Flex. I'm just trying to flex my calf. One, two, three, four, nice. Five, six, seven, eight, nice. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, nice. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Good news. Good news. When you go down, you want to stretch. And when you come up, you want to squeeze, squeeze. You're flexing your cat. And you're flexing your cat. So you don't just wanna, you don't just wanna go down and come up. Go down and come up. You don't wanna do that. The power, the power in creating the right environment in in the muscle that, that activates it to work and stimulate the product that is hypertrophy is is the action of contracting it against the resistance so it's not just up and down stretch it down but flex it up stretch it down and flex it up stretch it down and flex it up because this is a contraction believe it or not even in the point of stretch six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15. Woo bring them out, bring them out. Oh, you're on some weight. Woo. Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> All right, let's. Two, yes. Three, I want you four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. All right. Yeah. Ooh, what is that? Set number three or four?
making it look bad. You make it look bad. That's good, but that's good news. Okay, let's try to put our toys away. Let's move on.
muscle failure. That's that's what we're looking for. That's a very positive, very positive sign that we're working towards. A lot of people say no pain, no gain. Not necessarily you're really looking to hurt yourself as much as we are talking about trying to maximize the use output of your muscles to stimulate activity that will cause them to grow when you add nutrition and rest. So toes and heels out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Heels and toes out. Notice how my knees are bent. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Parallel. Oh, I lock my knees now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, failure. Yep. The contraction that moves your, your femur, your femur bone from here to here and allows your pelvis to come underneath your chest is activation on your glute. Does that make sense? Yes. So you don't want to be here. I need you to aim to sit here and activate your glute. And that's what we're doing right here. So what happens is you see a lot of people lean forward. And they'll sit forward or they'll sit back. If you sit back, this will start to activate the tensor fasciolata, this, this, this little muscle that sits at the top of your iliotibial band. We don't, right, this back, no, 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 no. that's your medius. This here, it, it attaches from the top of your, um, your um, the ischial crest, the crest of your ischium, and reaches over to the head of your femur bone. And that muscle right there is called your tensa lata fasciolata. It's the head of, it represents, it represents the head of your iliotibial band. Okay. So your whole IT band um, is, is, receives a point of origin based in the, 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 um, the muscle that is your issue. I'm sorry, your, uh, uh, your um, tensa lata fasciolata. So anyway, I'm saying all this to say that if you sit forward, what happens is you'll activate that. You hit, hit your hip abductor muscles. So AD, 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 AB, abduction to open, to pull away from your body center line. So by contracting that, by sitting all the way back, you're more prone to activate it. We don't want to activate that. We want to sit forward, sit forward, and that allows us to, by keeping our 
our, 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 our shoulders directly over our pelvis. This. Like 90 degrees, right? One of nine, right. So now what happens is you have, you're able to, instead of activating your hip, you're able to activate your glute, your gluteus maximus. It, it, it activates and pulls your femur, your, your femur bones apart. It's, it's responsible, the contraction of your glute is responsible for it. So that's what we're doing. So let's, let's get this going. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five. You have to flex it here. Six, flex it here. Seven, flex it here. Eight, flex it here. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Bang! All right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to flex your glute. Open it up again. Open it up. Flex. One. Feel for this. Feel for it. Feel for it. Feel for it. And release. And release. And again. Two. And release. Three. And release. Feel for it. Flex it hard. Let's go. Three. Four. Uh-huh. Five. Uh-huh. Six. Feel for it. Feel for it. Feel for it. Seven. Feel for it. Let's go. Eight. Flex this. Nine. Flex this, make this hard. 10, flex this, make this hard. 11, flex this, make this hard. Let's go. 12, uh-huh, uh-huh. 13, uh-huh, uh-huh. 14, flex here, flex here, flex here. 15, uh-huh. 16, uh-huh. 17, uh-huh. 18, that's what you need, that's what you need. 19, uh-huh. 20, good, good, man, let's get this. When you step here, you need to be able to, what happens here is, when you step forward and you just step forward, it stays in your knee. When you step forward, but turn your foot out, you give your knee a place to go. This is how you activate your knee. You see what I'm saying? That's what's happening here. So, so in order to get activation on your glutes, you can't, you can't squat in just in here. When you step, you have to turn that out. By turning it out though, it gives you the, the ability, come on this side, come on this side. When you step here, it gives you the ability to contract your glute. So up at the top of this movement is a contraction of your glute, back down. Up at the top of this movement is a contraction of your glute, back down, you get me? So what happens is, doing this exercise and then coming over here and doing this exercise. Finishing, you can come back over here. Three sets, what happens is you start to create a synergy. Okay. It's a synergistic response that allows you to neurologically take inventory of what you're feeling, take getting that biofeedback information, that internal bio information. And what happens is you use it to take command of your instrument. So we do, by the third set, you should be able to fill your glute a lot more connectively than you do right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. But this is what you have to do in an effort to, to get those muscles to work under the control of your mind. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So let's get it. We're going to do, do three sets, and then we're going to move on. Yes? All right. All right. So I'm going to set it off. One. I might have to go a little heavier. <laughs> Mighty ass over here. Let's go. What? Two.
like this? No. No. Not at all. You don't have to put your leg up. You can. Because the goal is to focus on activating your glute. Do this maximus. Do it right on the side. Right. One. Two. Uh huh. Three. Uh huh. Four. Uh huh. Five. Flex your glute. Come up. Flex your glute. Lock your pelvis forward. Come up. Flex your glute. Yes. 15. Uh-huh. That's good. Right there is good. 16. Okay, other side. Let's do 15 on each side. Let's go. One. Uh-huh. Let's go. Control. Two. Slow it down. Control. Control. Three. Use your muscles. Use your muscles. Four. Control. Let's go. Five. Flex your glute. Flex your glute. Six. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Seven. Use your muscles. Let's go. Eight. Uh -huh. Let's go. Nine. Use your muscles. Ten. Flex your hoop. Flex your hoop. Eleven. Four more. Twelve. Use your muscles. Thirteen. Use uh -huh. your muscles. Fourteen. Uh -huh. Fifteen. Give me one more. Try sixteen on the other side. Good. Okay. Let's get it. Three. Open up the glute. Four. Feel your glute. Feel for your glute. Five. Feel for your glute. Feel for your glute. Six. Feel for your glute. Let's go. Seven. Feel for your glute. Let's go. Eight. Feel for your glute. Let's go. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Remember this. Twelve. No glute. Thirteen. Fourteen. Flex your glute. Fifteen. Flex your glute. Sixteen. Uh huh. Seventeen. Uh huh. Eighteen. Uh huh. Nineteen. Uh huh. 20. All right, let's see. Talk to yourself. Three. You can. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. your bicep. What would you do? You try to make it harder. You yeah. try to make it harder, harder, mm -hmm. right? The same rules apply with this. So when you open or even when you're in there and you step, you want to go into your mind and you want to take that muscle and flex each one through every inch of the movement. Each one through every inch of the movement. And you finish it with a lock with your pelvis forward. That E. Mm. It talks about activating your muscles. That's the only way you're going to stimulate the appropriate response, which is growth and all that stuff that we're talking about. I want to get my butt tight. I want to get my quads tight. I want to get the tone good. All that stuff comes from flexing. flexing. Neurological connection will help you, but that's what you're doing. You're taking, you're using the neurological connection to make these muscles work. Make them work. Make them work. Make them work. Don't just get caught up in the flash of movement. The flash of movement. <laughs> Because it's not a dance. You get me? I know you got a lot of cardio out, but I know you're very fit. I know you can. What I want you to do, I want you to use your muscles. It will help you get where you want to go. Does that make sense?
seven. Big range of motion and over. Let's go. 13. Close, 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 close. 14. Close, close, close. Squeeze. 15. Close. 16. Use your boots. 17. Let's go. Let's go. 18. 19. 20. Okay. It's away. Right back. One more. String, believe it or not, and activate the top of my calf. Oh. When I take my pelvis and lock it forward, that allows me to activate my glute. My hamstring actually runs underneath my glute. So to activate my hamstring, to activate my glute, is to activate the same muscles that form what's called your um, posterior chain. Two, three, four, Five, deliberate. Six, deliberate. Seven, deliberate. Eight, let's go. Nine, deliberate. Ten, deliberate. Twelve, deliberate. Let's go. One, two, that's 15. All right, same rules apply on the other side. Let's rock. One, two, Flex 
your hamstring, flex your hamstring. Seven, flex your hamstring, flex that. Eight, make this hard. Nine, make this hard. Ten, make this harder. Eleven, harder still. Thirteen, harder still. Fourteen, harder still. Fifteen, all right. I need to lock my pelvis down. To lock my pelvis now because I'm flexing my boot. To flex my boot means that I activate more muscle fibers in my hamstrings. So to lock my pelvis down means to contract my boot, which contracts more efficiently in my hamstring, which allows me to activate all the muscles in my posterior chain in the right hand side. Let's get it going. Yup, two. Yup, three. Yup, four. Let's go. Five. Lock your pelvis down. Retract it to the hamstring. Let's go. One. Two. Flex your ankle joint. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Hamstring. Hamstring. Come on. Ten. Uh huh. Eleven. Uh huh. <laughs> 12, okay. 13. One, okay. Two, okay. Three. Four. Five. Hamstrings, hamstrings, hamstrings. Six. Seven. Hamstrings, hamstrings, hamstrings. Eight. Hamstrings, hamstrings. Nine. Let's go. Ten. Hamstrings, hamstrings. Eleven. Okay, that was three so that's 20, 20, 15, 12, right? Okay. Let's go. 18, uh huh. 19, let's go, let's go. 20, good. Let's get it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
targeting your bicep femoris. Semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis, believe it or not. I learned that one time in a, uh, let's go. The goal here is to try to keep your pelvis tight to the bench, which allows you to activate your glute. More increased activation on your glute while doing a leg curl, lying leg curl, means more intense activation and proper recruitment of your whole hamstring, believe it or not. Um, let's get it. Flex this. 18. Flex this. Flex this hard. 19. Flex this. Flex this. 20. Good. Don't just close the joint. Flex to activate the muscles. Make your muscles work. Yes. return by limiting the range of motion so much and also limiting the activity. Um, full range of motion is everything, but also more efficient use of your hamstring by going through a complete range of motion and using a maximum amount of stretch to get a maximum contraction. So you open up the joint as far as you can and then you make more efficient use of 
of the muscle. So it's not just contracting the hamstring from the bottom portion, you know, on the, on the uh, tibia and fibula, but all the way up, even across the second joint, that is your hip. Does that make sense? Um, to aim to flex your glute when doing a leg curl means to make the contraction on your hamstring that much more efficient. Um, we'll be available to talk about that a little bit further too. But, oh shit, what did you do here? We gotta watch her. In and out. Somebody starts cheating. All right, let's get it. <laughs> Three, look at me here. I'm going all the way back. Don't just get these choppy movements. Get a big full range of motion. All the way back, all the way back. And a squeeze, maximum contraction. Remember, the contraction also occurs up here. Down, that make sense? Here, down, which is why it's important to secure yourself into the seat in order to do an efficient leg extension to maximize the return on the overall quad development. 18, 19, 20. Let's go, E. I flex it. This is it relaxed. This is when I flex it. This is when it's relaxed. This is when I flex it. So now that flexion on my hamstring is what I'm using to pull my my my, my trunk up and to release it. I don't have to touch the floor. I can bring I can bring this bar just to relieve my knee. That's good flexion and stretch on my hamstring. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Let's rock. One, uh-huh. Two, uh-huh. Three, 
Let's go, V. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Okay. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Come on. Nineteen. Twenty. Okay. Looks like you're, you're, you're doing more deadlifting than you are stiff legged like deadlifting. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When you deadlift, you're closer to a squat position and you're allowed to use more of your lower back. This is how, so that's a deadlift. What we're trying to do is a stiff legged like deadlift. So that means you're, you're almost over and more of, you're trying to recruit more of your hamstring than to actually distribute it through your lower back. Does that make sense? So we're closer in here and forward, which allows you to use your hamstring. What I'm doing wrong, how Your center of gravity is, is set up. You have mm, mm, and, you, and, and this is what happens. So when you come up, you're coming up in a, in a deadlift position. So that's, that's more, more torque, more of the resistance is put on your glute, your lower back, and more of your quad. When we step in and forward, what happens is we start to use more, transfer that to, to your hamstring. Does that make sense? So I guess it's the difference between playing football being here versus stepping in and leaning forward. So you have a, 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 a lineman's position versus a a, 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 full, a running back position. So more, so you almost want to imagine, instead of being here, you want to imagine being forward, allowing you to transfer more of the position onto your hands, as opposed to my back. Make sense? For those of you at home, 
Um, man, in order to keep a good contraction on your hamstring and in times even to learn how to connect better with the hamstring, a good thing to practice would be to use what's called the compound setting principle. Um, for those of you that's gotten a chance to do some of the online training work, um, you know a little bit of what I'm talking about. For those of you that don't, the idea with compound setting is to take a body part, particularly that we are trying to focus on uh, forcing ourselves to develop and beating it up by providing a tremendous amount of stimulation. And the way you do that is by doing an exercise, let's say, um, for the fine area and muscle groups, let's say in this case, it's stiff like a deadlift. Right after that, run over to a leg curl machine or a standing leg curl and do another set of 20 reps, which allows you to just constantly bombard that area with a lot of stimulation. Um, what'll happen is that by the time you can finish doing what was one set and now two sets, you will have pumped so much blood into the area that you'll find it alive and pulsing with, with this new kind of feeling of intensity that helps you find it better neurologically. Does that make sense? So without having to touch it, without having to, to do a whole lot of you know, um, mental gymnastics, you can connect with the area and make it, make, it, um, make it bend to your command a little bit. So it's a technique that's designed to help to improve the neurological awareness of the muscle, hence to allow you to better command it, um, to get more efficient reps and training capacity. Does that make sense? Now, personally, I, I, I encourage you to do that because when I, when I turn my toes in and my heels out, I feel like I'm better able to connect with my hamstring and recruit my, uh, what do you call it? It's your bicep femoris. Does that make sense? Somebody at home, look at your anatomy chart and uh, find the bicep femoris. It's the largest portion of your hamstring. Um, it's it's, it's uh, very, 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 very important with, um, um, I guess it makes up the largest part of your hamstring. So when I turn my toes in, I believe it has more to do with how it is attached, how it's a point of insertion um, falls on your femur. Um, because when I turn my toes in and my heels out, I feel like I'm that much more capable of, of, of making my hamstring contract from the bottom all the way up to the top. Believe it or not, the top of your hamstring where it inserts on the it's on the uh, the ischial crest of your of your the, the ischium, which is this this lower portion of your um, of your uh, your la 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 la. Yeah. Um, uh, sounds so crazy. The crest of your ischium, which is this this, this portion at the lower por the lower part of your um, pelvis. So, long story short, um, because of how it originates, I believe that when I turn my toes in, I'm able to make a better connection that allows me to make more efficient use of my hamstring contraction in an effort to, in an effort to erect my thorax. Um, so I guess the answer is in order to intensify the connection, to intensify the, the muscle recruitment, um, I believe it's good to turn my toes in. Um, and I think when I turn my toes out, um, if I'm standing with my toes out, I'm a lot more inclined to be able to use more of my IT band, um, my vastus lateralis, my quads. Um, when doing any movement, when doing any leg movement from the floor. Does that make sense? So, um, it's, it's really interesting to try to, to go into your head while training um, in the midst of all the things that are happening here, the music, the people and stuff, and to try to share some of the insights of, of the information that you're pulling from. It's like literally in your head, flipping through pages and pages and pages of material that interestingly enough when it comes time to to try to explain to the world you know hey 
these are all things that are going, these are notes I'm referring to in my head when I'm working. It can be very difficult to do. Your mind can be actually moving faster than you're actually capable of explaining in the moment, but it is very much the thought process inside that has been responsible for being able to produce the results um, that has guided your training and helped you learn a lot of things over the years. Um, but to answer the question, simply to turn my toes in and my heels out, I feel a more intensified, uh, a greater connection with the muscle, and I feel like I'm better capable of commanding it to work and respond in the way that I want it to. So for maximum development and maximum more efficient use of the bicep for Morris, I turn my toes in, my heels out. Yes? Oh. So by turning my toes in, turning my toes in and my heels out, I'm able to almost intuitively dig my heel into the floor and gain a greater command use value on my hamstring. Technically, as my hamstrings contract, my feet want to move, but they don't because they're planted onto the floor. Does that make sense? So I'm actually using gravity and grounding myself in it to find my, my hamstring and make it work. Does that make sense? So by turning my toes and my heels out, because of the way my hamstring is attached, it allows for me to intuitively feel for it and make it, make it responsible. Does that, does that help anybody at home? Did I, did I get you? If not, send me a message. Send me a message. And we'll, 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 we'll talk to you personally about it. If it ain't that important to you, then shut the fuck up. All right, anyway, let's move on. Okay. All right, let's get it. A good front squat. Now, I know you've seen in the magazines where everybody's got like three, 315 and 405 on this front squat. And you've probably been led to believe that if you don't have 135 pounds on the bar, then you're probably not squatting at all. Um, but I learned how to squat, much like how I'm gonna do this today. And since I got my girl V here, and she's ready to ride or die. She had her savage roar and she is just ready to go. Notice where my knees are. My knees are here, I wanna open them up. To go from here to here, talks about activating my glutes. See that? A lot of times people think they're doing it by doing this. We're not trying to do that. When I'm here, that means my lower back is working more, my knees are working more, my ankles are. When I'm sitting here, believe it or not, I'm able to activate my glute and my hamstring. My iliotibial band. being properly distributed between foot, each foot. Now look at me here from the side. I'm not leaning forward. I want to try to, again, take my pelvis, my shoulders, and keep my shoulders directly, just look at this mirror. So when you look in the mirror from the side, right? You don't want to lean forward. You want to try to keep your shoulders still on top of your pelvis. See that? That's leaning forward too much. So look, see how you this? This is not what we want. This is what we need. Have a look. Look at this bar behind me. I want to aim for this. 
I want to be able to, right? So now I step away from the bar. Alright, so we don't even have to worry about this bar. Let's step over here. Let's do that here. Yep. Uh -huh. One. Okay. Two. Slow it down. Two. Three. Uh huh. Four. Don't bounce. Let's go. Control. Five. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Six. Right here. Let's go. Seven. Don't bounce. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Next one. You know what? Here's the thing. You hear a lot of people that will talk about, you know, box squats and plyometrics and, 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 and whether it's even which is more effective to train with. Whether should it be going to the gym or using free weights or doing calisthenics. And the truth is they all have their place. All of these things are tools. The trick is learning when to implement the right tool. Um, I think plyometrics are great. I think calisthenics are great. But here's the question. What if it is that your level of development makes it so that a particular exercise or a particular style of training is not appropriate yet for you because of your, your, your skill sets? Sometimes you need to develop a little bit more um, in the way of solid skill sets to be able to do things like plyometrics or um, you know, calisthenics. So what I'm going to show you right now is a, is a way of, of using your own body weight, technically. So before you can just run over to the bar and start, you know, squatting like, you know, three plates and four plates and eight plates and so on, you know, you need to be able to perform the exercise. So let's, let's do this. And it's interesting to try to stay focused over here, believe me, because there's a lot going on. But I'm focused. All right. So here we go. Before grabbing the bar, I want to be here. Some resistance. That's what this bar is for. Same rules apply. Whether it's three pounds or three hundred pounds, same rules apply.
aggressive resistance. So, you saw me do this thing with no weight at all. You saw me do it with the bar. Now you see me do it with quarters on the end. And we progressively go up. <clears throat> Thus increasing the stress in the muscles here. Still the range of motion is very big. Once you feel it there, right? Now what happens is when you bring your shoulders oh, out. Oh, I see. So what? What I'm doing wrong? Okay. The chest. So technically, this bone, your manubrium, right at the mm -hmm. top of your sternum, the bar should be underneath it. It shouldn't be over it. Mm -hmm. So the bar is underneath it. So it's supposed to be like this. On this leg press, are you primarily thinking about hamstring exercise? Are you thinking about a quad exercise? Are you thinking about just just an overall mass? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get on here. Let's get this going. All right. So I am thinking about we've done we've done work for hamstrings, we've done work for quads. Uh, we got a basic front squat in there, got some leg extensions, primarily in the beginning we'll warm up, connect the tissue in the knees. Um, let's say we've done some decent, some decent reps with the front squats, but we need a finisher here. Um, let's think about this. Let's think about 20, 15, 12. Mm. Yeah, we should super set this. Okay, so. Yeah, alright. A little higher. Because I want to use my, my hamstrings a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit higher with my foot position. I'm gonna drive through my heels. It will allow me to 
activate my hamstring group. I'm gonna take my knees all the way back to my chest. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. I got this. That's 
so. <laughs> I will see. It's my new way. You I've... see people the place to have seven four. Yeah, you have to try seven four three workout. Gives you wings. Let's get it. Uh -huh. Let's go, let's go. Six, let's go, let's go. Seven, let's go, let's go. Eight, let's go, let's go. Can't. That's it. That's it, Good job. Nice one. very 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 interesting and fun um, very 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 happy and excited to have had this opportunity thank you guys for watching the only thank rock you. you are what's up yeah. we gonna, <laughs> have we got to get the fish pump yeah boom anyway to everybody out there that paid attention hopefully there was something in it for you that you were able to get out of it and it will help you on your journey and uh, to all the dynamic muscle family to everybody that's checking in with us online thank you and uh, everybody that tuned in yesterday, thanks for checking us out. I appreciate your feedback. That is definitely what's up. Stay tuned though, because we've got a lot of other things coming. And um, until next time, let's keep it positive. Let's keep encouraging each other.